buy me a bottle, get me a bottle. Hey guys, just coming back on here, I just thought I would make a little bit of an explanation because um, as you'll probably notice, I deleted my last video and there is a reason for it, um, primarily because I was speaking to my friend who's also in the fragrance world and we were discussing like, you know, opinions, like even negative opinions about fragrances and stuff and I did think to myself, maybe my personal opinion on some fragrances was a bit too negative and I wouldn't ever want you guys to feel like maybe it might not work on your skin um just because something doesn't work on me um doesn't necessarily mean that it won't work on you guys and I know that you're you know you'll know that anyway but I just thought to myself I was like do you know what um you know maybe she is right and maybe not that I'll never be honest in my reviews because I always will be but rather than putting a fragrance down potentially just because personally it doesn't really work in in my opinion um doesn't mean that you guys can't give it a go and give it a chance so yeah anyway <laughs> I feel like I'm waffling here but I just thought I would explain it and in some ways that's why I refilmed this video um giving you guys a bit of a part two and hopefully you'll enjoy it so welcome back guys, in today's video I have part two of reviewing new fragrances out for this year and as I said in my last video I've noticed and even more prevalent in this video as well, definitely trends that are coming up whether that's specific notes, specific, specific structures and I just need to preface this by the way before we get into it but whatever I say is just my own personal preference like for example there will be things that work on my skin chemistry that might not work on others and vice versa there might be things that don't really work on mine that might work on others and sometimes it's really hard to even review things sometimes because whatever i might find really beautiful or a really fantastic fragrance other people might not so let's just jump straight into it so to start off with guys we have a fragrance from the house of BDK Parfums and I actually don't own a fragrance from this house just yet but this actually might be the catalyst for buying my first ever fragrance because I really I did enjoy Rouge, Rouge Smoking, Passe Soir, um, which other ones? I've tried pretty much every single one you can imagine, French Bouquet or is it French I can't really remember, but all of the main fragrances I've tried, I really enjoy all of them. But this one, I have to say, I'll give it to BDK. They've done a fantastic job and I'm pretty tempted to buy the full fragrance. So I think I already mentioned, but this is 312 Saint Honoré. Um, Saint Honor, I, I think that's how you pronounce it. And this is a beautiful concoction of pink pepper, some orange blossom, it has a big note of ambroxan. And I feel as though in recent years that ambroxan note has become so popular. I mean, you smell it in like Baccarat Rouge, the eccentric molecules kind of fragrances as well. I think a lot of uh, mainstream fragrances they use ambroxan, even um, Dior Sauvage. I, I feel like it's quite an ethereal chemical kind of note where it does provide a bit of like a huggy, warm sensation and I absolutely love it. So this is a mixture of those notes along with like a Thai oud. Um, personally, I'll be honest, I can't smell the oud. Maybe right towards the, the end, it kind of gives it a bit of depth, but I doubt that it has real oud in it, just with it being so expensive. I have to say, I super enjoy this fragrance. I think it's feminine without being overly floral, or overly sweet, it has a very chic nuance to it. I absolutely adore it. So if you're into more of a musky, bright, vibrant, but also quite elegant fragrance, I think this is one for you guys. So as I said, I think I will be buying a full bottle of it. So that's 312 Sun Honor. So the next fragrance that I have is one from the house of Killian. Now, as you guys know, Killian is also a bit hit and miss for me, but I have to give it to them. This one, I was really pleasantly surprised. I thought it was really well done. Um, you know, it's not an overly unique fragrance, but that doesn't matter. I think when a fragrance is very well done in the notes that it kind of shines in, then, 
you know, buy me a bottle, get me a bottle. This is called Sun Kissed Goddess by Killian. I know that there's been quite a lot of hype around this fragrance. I think they've been doing all types of PR launches and things like that. But this is mainly a very vacation sunscreeny type of fragrance. This is if you're going away. This is if you're going on a nice lovely vacation, a nice holiday away. A very tropical and I actually have to say I super enjoy this fragrance. So let's give it a spray. Oh yeah. Oh well done Killian. Well done. Now in the beginning you definitely get a very sunscreeny very typical neroli type opening but what i really enjoy about this fragrance is sometimes neroli and bergamot can be a bit screechy but they've definitely softened it down with that coconut a bit of labdanum has really lovely sweetness to it and i'm really enjoying that as it goes into like the mid you can definitely smell more of a tropical floral type of vibe and that comes from the, the tiari flower um, as i said you still have that neroli in, right in the beginning which gives it a bit of lift but overall what i find really nice about this fragrance is it has that typical sunscreeny coconut sweet vibe but it's done so well you can really pick up on the notes and they last and this is one thing that i was saying in my last fragrance video about um, the Victor and Rolf fragrance, um, the Flower Bond, I just, I, I thought it could have done so much better if the notes had just carried on, whereas this is a very true coconut, sweet, vacation ready type of fragrance. It says what it is on the tin with it being sun-kissed goddess and it really does deliver. You do start getting a little bit more of a creamy, powdery type of vibe to it but still you don't lose that coconut or the sweetness which again is something that I kind of brought up before so overall I would really really recommend that you try this I'm actually even tempted to buy a fragrance for myself because I would love to wear this on holiday even kind of layering it with a jasmine fragrance oof that would be amazing. So that's Sun Kissed Goddess by Kim. So the next fragrance that we have is one that I think has been quite popular. Um, I've seen it a lot on like Insta and YouTube, you know, those short clips. And I think even just main influencers, so not fragrance influencers, I think they've been kind of like pushing this fragrance, probably because they've been sent it in PR. Um, and you know they've really enjoyed it and listen i don't mind influencers pushing fragrances i think in some ways it's good because it gives you know the fragrance world a bit of a wider reach in general so i had to try it for myself i thought well we'll give this one a go so this is sirene from fragrance de bois and i have to say i do enjoy it i do enjoy it i think it's a really beautiful fragrance um is it going into more mainstream with it having cherry and amber? Definitely, but you know, that's to be expected. And I think a lot of brands, they've kind of taken note, pun intended, notes are being more and more, becoming more and more popular, particularly cherry, mango. We were, we were talking about this in the last video, but I'm just trying to say it again. So this has a few notes in it. Mainly it has like an amber accord of like labdanum, has cypriol, main is cherry of course with a nice sweetness. But what I really enjoyed about this fragrance, not so much the cherry, but definitely the oud in the background. I thought it had a really nice warmth, woodiness, kind of sexiness to it. So I'm just going to spray a little bit here for you guys. I have to say, it is a gorgeous fragrance. Super sweet, feminine, has that lovely cherry marzipani type of note in it. So similar to Lost Cherry in the beginning, I find. The only main difference, it has a little bit of a oody, woody, smoky kind of vibe to it, apart from Lost Cherry. Oh, and then it goes down into like a really gorgeous oud, smoky kind of backing. It has a bit of a, like a tang to it, which might be coming from the cypriol or something that's giving it a bit of a, a medicinal kind of vibe. I do think it's a great fragrance. I think especially if you're going on a night out, oof, the amount of compliments that you'd get from this one, unreal. 
And I have noticed as well that Fragrance de Bois, particularly for this fragrance, lowered their price. And I think there is a, a massive reason being is because they wanted it to be a bit more mainstream, um, grab a few more people's attention. And why not? I mean, look at Delina from Parfums de Mali. That was a great seller. Even people who weren't into fragrances all of a sudden started buying from quote unquote a niche house. So why not? So I have to give it to Fragrance de Bois. Really beautiful fragrance. So the next fragrance that I have is from a very cherished house. It's from the house of M. Mikalev. And as you guys know, I absolutely love Mikalev. I bought quite a few of their, you know, few of their fragrances, even discontinued ones. I bought them and I absolutely love the house. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit of hit and miss. You know, there will be fragrances that you steer towards and things that you don't particularly like. This one I do really enjoy. I think it's a really beautiful, mature, white floral fragrance. So I'm just going to spray a little bit here for you. Ah, it's gorgeous. It's so bright. Um, so in the beginning, you definitely have a huge hit of citrus. I think that's either coming from some lemon, some bergamot. Even has like a bit of like an orange blossomy type of feel with some neroli. It's very bright um, in the beginning. But also, I don't know, some people enjoy this, some people don't. I'm a little bit on the fence about this. It has a big note of petit grain. And petit grain can sometimes be a little bit on the bitter green side. So if you don't mind a bit of bitter greenness to kind of like level out those citruses, then I think you'll enjoy this. Also really lovely about this fragrance is that it has a really lovely note of white florals in it. It has so many different varieties. Um, the only thing that I would say is that the base isn't super strong, um, overall, it's mainly a very heavy citrus, bright, slightly green floral fragrance. I guess, you know, if you're going for some spring walks, if, you know, you're going to a lovely outing, maybe even some brunch with the girls, it is definitely quite an alluring fragrance with it being, you know, bright, floral, very inviting. So overall, I think this is a beautiful fragrance. So that's Au Feminine by Mikalev. Sorry, I just had to adjust my seat because I forgot there was one more fragrance that we needed to try. This one actually surprised me. And I'll say this now because it is a designer fragrance. It's La Nuit Trésor by Lancôme. But this is the Le Parfum uh, version, flanker of it. And I have to say, I did really enjoy it. And not so much in the beginning, right? Because the beginning is very similar to the typical La Nuit Trésor, which is a beautiful fragrance, by the way, but kind of lacks a bit of something, something to it. But towards the end, because I did spray it on my skin a couple of days ago, just kind of let it sit, let it, let it do its own thing. I can't even speak anymore today. And I was really surprised. It gave... A certain type of depth, like a particular sweetness that maybe the original doesn't quite have or has lost over the years. I'll just spray it here for you in the air. That is so gorgeous. It's like an elevated version of the original. So it has an even deeper black currant kind of opening, a bit of cacao some woodiness to it as well which is so beautiful if you can imagine like a syrupy black currant so it's not as gourmand as the original but more leaning to like a darker almost woody type of version of this fragrance but in a very sexy feminine way so you have this really big dose of rose but it's not overpowering the black currant those two kind of stay in harmony throughout and what is really pretty about this is you do have a bit of a chocolatey cacao -y kind of nuance to it but it's not overpowering at all it's not as gourmand as the original i'm actually gonna buy a bottle of this because i can't stop smelling it do have a like a little bit of a patchouli vibe gives it a bit of woodiness a bit of darkness but it's not overpowering and this is what i think is so amazingly done with this fragrance so if you're a fan of la nuit rosor i would 100 percent 
recommend you buying this fragrance or at least try and get first, see how you get on. But overall, I have to say Lancome, you did very well with this one. So that is La Nuit Trésor Le Parfum. So guys, that's it for today's video. Please, as always, give it a like, thumbs up down below. I'd really appreciate if you guys have any more suggestions in terms of like new fragrances to try and new fragrance trial on the channel. Have a lovely weekend, guys, or a lovely week, and I'll see you later. Bye.